if the United States wants me to work for it in the government, I've always been happy to do so. Obviously, I volunteered to do this long before. That's how I got access. That's how we learned about the unlawful and unconstitutional mass surveillance of Americans uh, and everyone else around the world. Um, so, yeah, whenever my country calls, uh, I will be there. That was NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden hiding out in Russia and telling Brian Williams on MSNBC that he would answer the call of the same country he's hiding from. He says he'll come back to the US and work for the government even on the condition he can make his case to the public in a trial. Of course, it's not that simple. In May 2013, Snowden left his job at the National Security Agency in Hawaii and flew to Hong Kong. There, he handed journalists thousands of classified NSA documents that revealed the US had been collecting data on millions of Americans, including phone records, without a warrant, despite telling Congress otherwise. Splashed across The Guardian, The Washington Post, and other publications, the nature of the bombshell revelation led the US government to charge Snowden with theft of government property and, most importantly, two counts of violating the SP. Act of 1917. Snowden asked 27 countries to grant him asylum and was on his way to Ecuador when the US nullified his passport and stranded him in Russia, where he was eventually granted asylum and officially offered permanent residency this past October. Back in 2015, retired general and former director of the NSA, Michael Hayden, said Snowden would die in Moscow and that he's, quote, not coming home. But now that a US court ruled in September that the program Snowden exposed did violate the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and may even be unconstitutional, there were renewed calls for pardoning the man at the center of that ruling. After the ACLU tweeted on Sunday that Trump should pardon Snowden, many across the political spectrum, including Republican congressman and Trump ally Matt Gates, are calling for the same. Trump himself, though, has been all over the place on this issue. Back in 2013, he took a pretty strong anti-Snowden stance. The spies in the old days used to be executed. Uh, this guy is uh, becoming a hero in some circles. And later, he explicitly tweeted, Snowden is a spy who should be executed. But now he's changed his tune. This is what he said at a press conference in August. Do you want to give Edward Snowden a pardon and bring him back? You, you once suggested that... Well, I'm going to look at it. I, I mean, I'm not that aware of the Snowden situation, but I'm going to start looking at it. There are many, many people. It seems to be a split decision. There are many people think that uh, he should be somehow treated differently, and other people think he did very bad things. And I'm going to take a very good look at it. Trump's right on one thing. It is a split and very divisive issue. And while I personally agree with the growing chorus of people calling for a pardon, uh, some see Snowden as a freedom fighter, others see him as a traitor, uh, to put it uh, Crudely. Uh, that's the focus of our panel discussion tonight. I do want us to hear both sides of this argument. Uh, joining me now to discuss this is the lead attorney for Edward Snowden himself, Ben Weisner, director of the ACLU Speech, Privacy and Technology Project, and NBC News contributor Clint Watts, a former FBI special agent who served on the Joint Terrorism Task Force and is author of the book Messing with the Enemy. Thank you both for joining me. Clint, can I start with you? Given the growing number of sure. people from across the political spectrum now calling for a pardon for Edward Snowden. Why do you think he shouldn't get a pardon, that he doesn't deserve one? Well, there are processes for this, and we've seen it occur at least four times that I can count this year for whistleblowers. I've personally gone through this process myself. Uh, part of the reason I testified in front of Congress three or four years ago is because I brought up issues to the government. The first time I left the FBI, I did because I wasn't happy with things I saw. I brought them up and I decided to move on. There are whistleblower processes, and you're briefed on these. Whenever you enter the government, if you got complaints up the chain of command, you can pursue those. He unilaterally decided to take more, much more the intelligence than about domestic surveillance and fly to two countries who have intense domestic surveillance on their population. So the scope is way out of bounds. And there are others that have stood and really believed in this before, and they did not fly to two enemies, essential adversarial countries of the United States, and bring those documents, that intelligence yeah. there. This isn't just about domestic surveillance. This is also about how much taxpayer money, how much resources, how many Americans maybe even put their life on the line to build this intelligence. And he decided on his own and independently without really flushing out a full whistleblower complaint. 
OK, let me bring in uh, Ben. Uh, let me ask you, aside from responding to what Clint just said, just to be clear, he isn't asking for a pardon, is he? But you believe he should get one. The ACLU has said he should get a pardon. At what he's said, he's been advocating for pardons for other whistleblowers. He's been advocating for a pardon for a reality winner, for example. Um, so, no, he, he is not asking for any special consideration. I, I do want to respond to a few points. Um, Snowden did not act alone. Uh, he provided the documents to journalists, and every single thing that was published was published after those journalists, those news organizations, uh, after consulting with relevant government agencies, made the decision that it was in the public interest for the public to have that information. Those news organizations won the highest awards in journalism for public service. The number of documents that Snowden himself disclosed is zero and has always been zero. Uh, I understand that's not a legal argument, but it's important for people to understand that Snowden could have put this information on the internet and instead he chose to work through journalism. Uh, could he have gone through the system like other whistleblowers? Look, there is no whistleblower for system for someone who's saying that the entire system of mass surveillance, um, which has been briefed to Congress and approved by secret courts, uh, is nonetheless illegal or unconstitutional. Uh, in those instances, the only thing you can do is bring the press into the equation. Uh, and, and think about this for a moment. Um, almost everything we ha we know about the misconduct of our intelligence community, whether it was about uh, the CIA's torture prisons and rendition program, what happened in Abu Ghraib, um, uh, other war crimes, uh, illegal surveillance, we know because someone in government broke the law, and that's the irony. The only time that we get real oversight uh, of that kind of misconduct uh, is ironically when somebody breaks the law. We had enormous reforms in the 1970s that originated when anti-war activists broke into an FBI office and stole the files and mailed them to the Washington Post. Snowden clearly broke the law. Uh, his law breaking led to the most significant surveillance reforms in a generation. Uh, and the argument is this is what the pardon power is for. It's not for people who didn't break the law. It's for people who did break the law, but where circumstances reveal that it was profoundly in the public interest uh, and the punishment has been enough. Clint, would you agree with that, that it was in the public interest at the very minimum? I know you made the point about China and Russia, and we can come back to that. But would you agree at home, given reforms have been carried out in the intelligence community and in the surveillance field, given everyone from Eric Holder even, the former Attorney General, said what he did was a public service, um, would you agree then that on that basis at least, he you know, should be considered for a pardon at the very minimum? No, uh, there are processes for this. Uh, there are many alternatives he could have chosen for how to deal with this situation other than flying to China and then Russia, where he still currently resides. Uh, there are many ways to handle this. He chose not to. If he wanted to get journalists involved, he could have followed the Pentagon Papers model. He could have pursued that if he was convinced that a trial would essentially exonerate him, that he was right in these circumstances. He could have even gone to advocates. Uh, for privacy at the Senate. He could have taken the documents even in that way and done something in the United States, but that's not what he did. What also isn't addressed is why certain individuals, particularly in the Russian parliament, say that Edward Snowden has provided intelligence to them. How do we know that Edward Snowden hasn't disclosed any of these other documents? Why did he take documents that had to do with military, political, and economic secrets? What is this for? If it was really about domestic surveillance and that was his cause, then I would understand with limited scope, and I might be more sympathetic to the action. But that doesn't seem to be what the case is. His timeline also does not match up. He very clearly at different points articulates that he did this in response to DNI Clapper, but fails to admit that he was also taking documents and removing materials on that timeline long before Clapper ever made those comments. The timeline doesn't add up. The motive doesn't add up. And there are other circumstances. I don't think he was trying to pull off a great espionage coup for a foreign power, but I also think he was a young man that was trying to make a decision unilaterally without entirely understanding the entire structure there. I can tell you from my own personal experience okay. working in government that I at no time had broad access to all Americans' private information or was able to surveil them without court order. There is a record trail for this. If you want to make an argument about bulk data collection, whether it was useful, I think that argument's been made, and he but, may have revealed it. There are a lot of ways we conduct this, this sort of activity where we're not carte blanche saying anybody in the United States government that doesn't like what they see in the office just steal national secrets and run off to Moscow. Let me jump in, Mehdi. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to make a point Yeah, please about, jump in, Ben. Go on. 
So, so the most famous whistleblower of the last year, of course, was the Ukraine whistleblower, who, as Clint says, took a different path, went by the book, um, followed the procedures as they're set out. But we would never have heard of that person had not somebody illegally leaked that complaint to the press. Uh, had he just gone through channels and had nobody leaked that, it would have been buried and there would not have been an impeachment. The reason why that. we had an impeachment trial is because somebody, probably in Congress, we don't know where, went and leaked that to the press and that brought public pressure on. So the system uh, may work in certain cases, but for profound misconduct, uh, we have always relied on people um, uh, for reasons of conscience, um, bringing the fourth estate into the equation. Um, now, Snowden had seen... Ben, can I... Ben, can I... Hold on, Ben, Ben, can I just jump in here one second? Ben, hold on, Ben. Just for the sake of our viewers watching, Clint has talked about the need for a trial. You talked about the fact that he did break the law. Just so our viewers are clear here, can you explain why do you believe Edward Snowden couldn't have just said, you know what, I'll make my case in a trial. I know I broke the law. Let me make the case to a jury of my peers. Well, and this is what Daniel Ellsberg has said time and time again. Um, the law is very different in 2013, 2020 than it was in 1971. At that point, it wasn't even clear that providing classified secrets to the press was a violation of the Espionage Act. Ellsberg was the first person charged with that. Um, by 2013, it was clear that not only was that a felony, but that there is no defense that you can offer. If, if Snowden were to come back for trial, he'd effectively been coming back for sentencing. The Espionage Act makes no distinction between selling the government's secrets to a foreign power for personal profit and providing them to a journalist who goes on to win the Pulitzer Prize for public service for publishing those documents. Those are equivalent acts under the law. And Snowden wouldn't even be able to say to a jury, look, Congress changed the law for the first time since the 1970s to restrict this surveillance authority. Uh, the president even put in place greater protections for foreign citizens from privacy. Uh, the courts uh, have ruled that this program was illegal. None of that would be admissible or relevant in a trial under the Espionage Act. And that's why um, Snowden decided to go to the airport instead of to a lawyer's office. Uh, and Ellsberg himself has said that that was the right decision. Clint? I don't think that's why Snowden decided to go to the airport, but that's beside the point. I'm all for him coming back to the United States and having a trial. So maybe there's some other charge that he could face, and uh, we could look at maybe removing or withdrawing the you know uh, complaint that's based on the Espionage Act. I'd be all for that. You know, but the bottom line is, is Edward Snowden, and by giving him a pardon, you're setting a precedent that any American that goes in and decides, hey, I just don't like uh, what's going on here. I think I'm going to take all of the classified documents, which I sign an oath to protect, and I'm going to take those and unilaterally make a decision for all of the American people based on myself. Well, let's bring them back here. The American people then can sit as a jury at a trial. They can make a decision. Was he acting in the best interest of the United States? Do we create a standard by which anyone can walk but into ben any But Ben's saying that's not an option out. under the Espionage Act, Clint. Well, but I want to say something Ben's saying too. that's not an option under the Espionage Act. I want to make one other sure, point. Too. Let's talk. Separate the let's talk about Act. We put put forth other charges. There are other charges that I'm sure he could be charged with, and we could create okay. the scenario where he comes to trial. So, Clint okay, is worried that if Snowden is not charged, we won't have a deterrent for future people in this position to breaking the law. I, I'm worried uh, I wonder where that deterrence. That, by the way, ben. I wonder where that deterrence argument is. Um, when Washington is literally crawling with people who have been pardoned, but we don't use that term, uh, the people who were involved in the torture conspiracy, the people who kidnapped foreign citizens, the people who opened secret prisons, um, the people who have been engaged in extrajudicial assassinations, none of these people have even been charged or ever get charged. It's only lower level officials uh, or like, like Snowden who ever even get brought into this picture. So if we're really worried about precedent, um, let's bring some charges against senior officials who have broken the law. Look, I think seven years in exile is plenty of deterrence for most people uh, who would consider doing what Snowden has done. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your insights. We're out of time. This debate will continue on. I'm glad you were both here to enlighten us. Uh, NBC News contributor Clint Watts uh, and attorney Ben Weiser, lead counsel to Edward Snowden uh, at the ACLU. Thank you both so much uh, for coming on the show. 
Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.